Hello, this is Dr. David Green, CEO of the Nevada Pain Network. The topic today are the top 10 things you should know about stem cell procedures. First of all, stem cell procedures for musculoskeletal conditions are now a reality. You have individuals from grandparents to weekend warriors to professional athletes having these procedures done for multiple different reasons. The first thing is that modern stem cell procedures have no ethical issues. No longer is there any fetal tissue used in the stem cell products, only adult stem cells or amniotic derived from consenting donors after a C-section are used. So there's no embryonic stem cells and there's no fetal tissue at all, which has completely removed any of the ethical concerns that we saw in the past. Now they are showing a lot of promise for degenerative and rheumatoid arthritis, SI joint and disorders of the spinal joints and discs, tendonitis all over the place, Achilles, rotator cuff, elbow, plantar fasciitis, uh, ligament injuries, sports injuries, like patellar tendonitis or sprains and strains, diabetic wounds, and also stress fractures are all showing res excellent results so far with stem cell procedures. Third thing to know is that stem cells are really like a blank slate. You start from an undifferentiated state and then it converts into any number of necessary cells. So if these are the blank slate stem cells, it can turn into skin, cartilage, tendon, ligament, or muscle. Now, a lot of the reason that this happens is because of the environment that they're placed into. So if they're placed into an area of a damaged ligament, then more often than not, that's gonna, the cells are going to convert into the ligament cells to help heal that problem. Stem cell procedures can heal injury. Now traditionally what you've had is cortisone treatments which didn't heal anything. They're very good for pain relief, knocking out inflammation, but they don't actually heal the injury. But what you have now is regenerative medicine stem cell treatments that actually can heal the damaged soft tissue and the cartilage. So this is cutting edge and it helps get athletes back on the field faster, um, avoiding surgery, it can delay or avoid the need for joint replacement, and it can provide pain relief at the same time. Current treatments do not use embryonic stem cells. The use of adult stem cells in research and therapy is less controversial than embryonic stem cells because their production does not require the destruction of an embryo or a fetus. Amniotic fluid stem cells are intermediate between embryonic cells and adult stem cells. They have some potential to differentiate into the different cell types, but they are not pluripotent. Pluripotent cells can be a problem, and what happens with those is they differentiate into cells and they replicate and replicate and replicate and sometimes they don't know when to stop so they can actually form tumors potentially but those aren't used in modern uh, stem cell procedures the ones used do know when to stop there are now four different types of regenerative medicine procedures first is bone marrow derived and here you can see a picture of bone marrow being aspirated from a person's hip area it's a great source of stem cells. Fat derived, which is similar to like a mini liposuction type procedure. And then enzymes are put into that fat to help break out the stem cells. Amniotic derived, which doesn't come from the patient at all. It comes from a consenting donor, goes to an FDA regulated lab, and then it's just a, a vial that has the liquid in it to inject. And then PRP therapy, which is really an indirect form of stem cell therapy. Now with amniotic derived stem cells, they have a lot of amazing qualities. As mentioned, they are obtained from consenting donors after a scheduled C-section, not an amniocentesis. Okay, this is fluid that's going to be discarded anyway. It's processed at an FDA, FDA regulated lab. They check for all kinds of, you know, typical diseases. And the impressive qualities are that there's a very high concentration of stem cells. It has hyaluronic acid, similar to what we have in our native joints anyway growth factors and proteins, there's a lot of those, antimicrobial properties, so it prevents infection. Um, it's been used tens of thousands of times worldwide without adverse events. It's used in ophthalmology, it's used in wound care, it's used for de degenerative arthritis. And the interesting thing is that it's immunologically privileged. So people say, well, I'm going to get a, a rejection, right, because it's from somebody else. That doesn't happen. It's immunologically privileged. It does not cause a rejection reaction. So small studies to date are showing excellent results for regenerative medicine for knee arthritis, elbow epicondylitis, tennis elbow. Both those studies were out of hospital for special surgery. 
degenerative disc disease. There was a recent phase one clinical trial looking at bone marrow aspirate for degenerative disc disease. The results were great. They're heading into phase two. Plantar fasciitis um, often can be very problematic for patients. It can last for years, but with regenerative medicine injections, it often goes away uh, pretty quickly. Ligament injuries do very well um, with regenerative medicine procedures. One of the pictures you saw earlier was of Heinz Ward. He had a regenerative medicine injection two weeks before uh, Super Bowl and was able to come back and play successfully there. Rotator cuff injury, one of the previous pictures you saw was of Bartolo Colon. He had a regenerative medicine procedure. He thought he was out of the league, but with that he was able to come back and play at a very high level and make the all-star team. And then Achilles tendonitis and tears can be very problematic, but it often does really well with regenerative medicine procedures. Nine, number nine is that it's not yet covered by insurance. Despite the exceptional results being reported, it usually takes insurance companies several years to cover these types of new technology. The cost of the procedure ranges, but if you can avoid surgery as, uh, with these procedures, then you know, it really ends up being a cost uh, uh, drop in the bucket. And the last thing to understand is that these are outpatient and exceptionally low-risk procedures. Platelet-rich plasma therapy involves a simple blood draw, and then the blood is uh, centrifuged, and um, the platelet-rich part is taken out and then injected into the problem area right away. The fat and bone marrow derived is also processed immediately and injected into the problem area. Amniotic derived is immunologically privileged and has a very long track record around the world. There's just minimal adverse event potential with any of these procedures. The top pain centers in Nevada are at Nevada Pain. They are a comprehensive pain management with a one-stop shop with board certified pain doctors, um, chiropractors, physical rehabilitation. They offer all of these regenerative medicine procedures at several locations. Over 50 insurances are accepted. As mentioned, reg regenerative medicine is not covered by insurance. They've won the Patient's Choice Award five years in a row. The website to visit is painmanagementlasvegas.com. And the number to call for scheduling is 702-323-0553. I'm Dr. David Green with the Nevada Pain Network. Your pain stops here.